back on again. If you bring a girl home, thank you, Christella, and you have um, sinned by objectifying her, somehow she didn't objectify you. No, you, you were an ugly pig, but you must have objectified her. Let's face it. We're both doing the same thing. If we both sinned in the exact same way, really, come on now. But this metrosexual push implies that only men are to blame because women are told to be this. That's it's a lie. Five, cultural Marxism established control. Damn, my computer is dying. Uh, controlled second wave feminism also advances the doctrine of cultural Marxism. Uh, and that claims that oppression emerges from patriarchal society and culture and not the state. Governments love cultural Marxism because it absolves them, absolves them of blame, of course. Six, men are paid more, myth. And it's so not true. For one thing, when's the last time you ever picked up a paper and it said, now hiring for fill in the blank? Men, ten bucks an hour. Women, nine bucks an hour. You ever seen that ad? Good! Neither have I! Uh, the establishment promulgates the myth that men are paid more than women because of discrimination, feeding into feminist doctrines about patriarchal systems oppressing women in the workplace. In reality, the wage gap is around 19% between the two sexes in the United States, and it's explained for a number of reasons. There's a link that have nothing to do with discrimination, including the fact that men work more hours, men seek less desirable jobs that pay higher. As a result, men account for 93% of workplace deaths, despite the fact that only 54% of the workplace is consisting of men. If that were to be happening with women, all the feminazis would be crying. <sighs> 94% of us are dying, but it's happening to men, so who cares? The establishment buries these shockingly high male workplace fatality figures because they completely contradict the myth that the jobs market discriminates against women. Amen. Seven, the privilege gap. Status collectivists, that is socialists, and their mouthpieces in the media and the establishment claim that Western men, and particularly white men, cannot express a valid opinion in any issue related in any way to a minority, such as feminism or immigration, because they have privilege. The privilege talking point is a stunt through which liberals and feminists attempt to shut down free speech. Hear it, read it, listen to it, it's true. In essence, they are asserting the ludicrous notion, and it is ludicrous, that a man's viewpoint has no value because of the color of his skin, his gender, or his country of origin. This is inherently racist in position, yet it is routinely used by leftists, that is to say communists, to shout down their ideological adversaries and silence male voices. Again, true. Eight, the legal system discriminates against men. In both the divorce and child custody proceedings, it is widely acknowledged that the courts heavily favor women and discriminate against men. Men are routinely hit with onerous alimony payments, even if women are capable of working and earning a good paycheck. Men only receive custody of their children in 10% of divorce cases. Uh, that speaks for itself. We'll go to the next one and go to the site for more. Nine, masculinity is a dirty word. Dissident feminist Camille Paglia recently wrote a Wall Street Journal piece in which the pterodactyl warned, as my computer wants to die, em emancipation of masculine virtues by establishment threatens to create massive destabilization in society due to less and less men being able to fill traditionally masculine roles in jobs market. Pegley appoints the school's cutting recess, the recent effort to deny biological distinctions between men and women. Actually, she's right on that. I take back what I said. Ten, domestic abuse against men. 
Whereas women have numerous safety nets to turn to if they become victims of domestic violence or abuse, men have virtually none, despite the fact that domestic abuse against men is a huge and growing problem. In the UK, for example, 44% of domestic abuse victims are male, while more married men suffer abuse at the hands of their spouse than married women. The conclusion, it says a totalitarian society can only survive if the male population has been gelded, emasculated, and disenfranchised. From that, we go on to uh, Paul Joseph Watson and Alex Jones on InfoWars uh, 10 Ways uh, True Communism. A uh, true, true communism. Freudian slip. True feminism is under attack. It is no secret that on this show I am a huge fan of the first wave of feminism and greatly against the second wave. So we're going to attack this problem from the other side. Then I'm going to go ahead and give you the correct view. Feminism is a top-down social movement controlled by the political class, which is exploited to produce cultural Marxism, that is communism, Confuse gender roles, disintegrate men, and mislead women, all while completely ignoring genuine women's issues. Uh, here are ten ways in which true feminism is under attack. One, feminism was hijacked by the political class to exploit women. When the average person thinks of feminism, they don't differentiate between first wave feminism and second wave feminazism, as I call it, as does Rush. First wave feminism was primarily centered around giving women the right to vote and the right to own property. No one would argue with first wave feminism being a noble cause. However, the second wave feminism was quickly hijacked with the, by the elite as a tool for social engineering and has little to do with women's rights at all. A quote often attributed to Adolf Hitler is, first you get the women, then you get the children, so follow the men by hijacking feminism and making it about subjugating men. The establishment succeeded to a great extent in making women more dependent on the state. That is entirely true. That is why you see a whole lot of women's nights where they drink free or for almost nothing, but the men have to pay out the nose. That is because where the women are, the men will follow. And since the courts are largely in the side of the women, if you can get the women, you already have the children. The men will follow. Two, the CIA played a role in hijacking feminism. No, but feminism is against the government. No, it's not. The Central Intelligence Agency, that is the CIA for you Kesha fans, played a role in a hijacking second-wave feminism via the work of Gloria Steinem, who is still a noted feminist icon today. Steinem admitted that she was recruited by the CIA to infiltrate youth counterculture movements in the late 50s, and subsequently emerged as the leading icon of second-wave feminism in the 1960s. Steinem subsequently received funding, and there's a link to it from the CIA and the ever-wonderful Rockefeller Foundation to set up Miss Magazine, which is a feminist publication. We know that's true. Three, cultural Marxism divide and conquer. Let's not forget the last quote came from somebody who admitted she did it, and she is still a leader in the quote-unquote movement. I would argue bowel movement. Second wave feminism served to advance cultural Marxism, which points that culture and language, not the state, is responsible for oppressing women. This is why the establishment constantly promotes second wave feminism, because blaming contrived women's rights issues on language, culture, and patriarchy is the state absolves itself of all blame, just like it did to men in the last article. Are you seeing what I'm getting at here? By characterizing complete non-issues such as the recent Man Bossy campaign as critical feminist causes, the state distracts from real women's rights issues such as those committed by the U.S. allies around the world. Um, again, I think this article gets to it if I haven't already skipped it. Let, women can't even drive in Saudi Arabia. They, uh, they can be stoned to death for uh, committing adultery in Iraq. Women don't complain about those things. They complain about the fact that you might find a girl's breasts nice, like, because you're a normal guy. Four, mainstream feminism ignores real women's, women's rights issues. I think it comes up here, and Beyonce is in the running for the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, for those of you that follow this show on a regular basis. 
Mainstream feminism serves to deflect attention away from the countries where genuine women's rights abuses and atrocities against women are taking place by advancing meaningless causes that have nothing to do with women's rights and everything to do with social engineering. Uh, this is the part I was talking about. A recent example is the Bambasi campaign, which was funded by some of the largest Western banks, oil companies, and PR firms on the planet. It's all about the money, people. While celebrity feminists such as Beyonce, Beyonce, talentless whore, were recruited as part of lucrative public relations campaign to ban a word, the Iraqi parliament was preparing to pass a new law that would legalize rape, prohibit women leaving home without the permission of their husband, and legalize the marriage of nine-year-olds. There was no multi-million dollar feminist blitz to bring light to this desperate situation, nor did Beyonce, who sounds like Tarzan in Drunk on Love, appear in any PSAs to put pressure on the government of Saudi Arabia. Now, Beyonce was too busy going, oh, oh, pretending it was singing. Five, feminists ignore the plight of Muslim women, fearing being labeled as racist. Politically correct left-wing feminists will rarely, if ever, campaign against some of the most egregious human rights abuses committed against women in the Muslim world. This again underscores the fact that mainstream feminism is not what it purports to be. Uh, there are innumerable examples of women being prosecuted in the Muslim world from the characterization of uh, terrorists, which they get called for simply driving in Saudi Arabia, to general genital mutilation in African countries, to stonings in Afghanistan. By genital mutilations, they mean burning a woman's clitoris off. That's what they do. Six, advertising targets women. In the U.S., women buy more than 80% of all goods and services. My girlfriend addicted to buying. If she's not buying something, she doesn't feel like she's breathing. This is why the majority of advertising is aimed at women. Advertisers routinely hijack feminist sentiment to push products that are not even beneficial and in some cases harmful to women, such as paraben-laden cosmetic products. Christelle does not buy those. I said she was uh, very likely to be baited by the advertising media. I didn't say she was an idiot. This can be traced back to the very foundation of modern advertising when Edward Bernays, the father of public relations with the link here, was hired to sell cigarettes to women who had previously been banned from smoking in public by marketing Lucky Strike cigarettes as torches of freedom and connecting them with the suffrage movement, Berkeley's convinced millions of women to take up a habit which led to chronic illness and death in many cases. Yeah, there's nothing worse than a lung cancer death. And that's what they gave to the feminists. Well, that's what feminist love is. Seven, mainstream feminism is about hating and degrading masculinity. As dissident feminist Camille Paglia was expertly identified, mainstream feminism's obsession with denying biological differences between men and women, which there are in fact some, is to blame for many of modern society's relationship troubles. What we are seeing is how civilizations commit suicide, asserts Paglia, noting that the emancipation of masculine virtues is psychologically neutering boys and creating a toxic gender imbalance. I agree. She is not the person I thought I was making fun of when I did it. I already apologized. Eight, women are being brainwashed. Uh, that femininity and motherhood are dirty words. And it mentions that being a mother and being ladylike is looked at as bad. Uh, look the article up. It's a boring paragraph to read. Nine, the real war on women uh, plunging fertility rates. Just as sperm counts, as I just reported, for men are plunging worldwide, female fertility rates are showing a similar decline. America's total fertility rate is now below the replacement, replacement rate, which is 1.93 for the average woman. That means if that doesn't happen, the American people will die out. Ten, estrogen mimics causing cancer. Growing concern over how estrogen mimic could pose a huge threat to women is also another issue that mainstream feminism has failed to address. Many of the transnational corporations that bankroll feminism 
would be directly impacted if estrogen mimickers, mimickers found in pharmaceuticals, pesticides, cosmetic products, and industrial byproducts were banned, which is the primary reason why the establishment feminism sidelines the problem. It says the conclusion, good news is that many women are losing faith in the second wave of feminism, recent polls, this is the link, shows that the majority of women, 38%, consider themselves feminists while 72% do not. Here's the correct view on this, people. Dividing the races, dividing the sexes, dividing the classes is one way that you can get away with putting poison in people's food because all they're doing is fighting each other. That's how you can have a nuclear meltdown in Fukushima that nobody cares about because they're too stupid. They're too busy fighting each other. Keeping us attacking each other is what is preventing us from attacking them. The issue is, left to our own devices, we usually don't kill each other. Yes, there are exceptions. They are constantly trying to kill us. As you can tell, if you keyword search parabens. Uh, info, uh, this is from The Guardian, I'm sorry. Paul Lewis, Snowden accuses Senate Intelligence Chair of hypocr Hypocrisy over CIA disclosures. The whistleblower Edward Snowden accused the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee of double standards on Tuesday, pointing out that her outrage at evidence her staff were spied on by the CIA was not matched by concern about widespread surveillance over ordinary citizens. That's because the tramp thinks she's our queen. Snowden, the former contractor whose disclosures to journalists revealed widespread surveillance by the National Security Agency, was responding to an explosive statement by Senator Dianne Feinstein about the CIA's attempts to undermine a congressional investigation into interrogation and detention. Basically, Di Dianne Feinstein thinks you should be spied on, but she thinks she's above it because she's so important. Nobody should be spied on. That's why the Fourth Amendment is a God-given right. Um, friends, you're listening to the correct views. I've got a few more stories to get to, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention how amazing the food was at the Arcadia Grill. Do me a favor. If you're in Canton, Ohio, or even with, if you're within an hour or two, three away, drive on in. The food is worth it. Go in there. Order the ravioli, enjoy the bread, chow out, and enjoy some of the best food you've ever had. Go up to the bar, order a 151 and Coke. It'll be made perfectly. Every time, make sure you tell Maria that Sam from The Correct View sent you. Also, uh, you're going to need something to read. I'm assuming if you're listening to this show, you're not one of those stupid Americans that don't ever read anything. Well, I got something good for you to read, especially if you want to wind down from all the politics we're doing. Go look at some of the awesome fictional works sold by Mike McLaughlin. M-A-C, laugh, L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Uh, he's on Facebook. Some of the best short stories you've ever read by one of the most off awesome writers still writing them. That'd be Mike McLaughlin. All right, guys, a few more stories to get to. This classifies under, there's a reason I call this the correct views. What have I been saying for over a year? Iranian nuke strikes hit with sabotage. Maybe you shouldn't build a nuke plant in an earthquake zone. Maybe you shouldn't build a nuke plant when all of your neighbors hate you and they're going to do everything they can to shut it down. And the reason they hate you is because you're Iran and you've been nasty to people forever. Am I saying Israel does no wrong? No, I'm saying Iran is just as bad. Iran, Iran might be a little bit worse because at least Israel isn't repressing women to the extent that Iran is. Are they repressing them some? Yes. Not like Iran. Iranian officials revealed on Monday that several new acts of sabotage have taken place at its controversial Iraq nuclear reactor facility and that other so-called enemy plots had been carried out at separate key nuclear sites. When this melts down, I will not feel bad for any of you moron sons of bitches. Don't build it, morons! You've made too many enemies for one, and you're on an earthquake zone. We already know from Fukushima that these predictions do happen, and yet these boneheads three years later are going to build the same thing at the same spot. It was not the tidal wave that took out the power plant. It was the earthquake. 
the earthquake that is very like the one that Iran's going to get hit with, which is one of the reasons nobody wants them to have the damn plant. Along the side, the fact that they're going to dirty bomb Israel, and the only way they should be allowed to have a nuke plant is if they acknowledge Israel's right to exist. Yes, I said it. Iranian security officials told the county state's run press early Monday that these new acts of sabotage have been discovered at the Iraq heavy water reactor, which should never be built, which has been jointly built with the aid of Russia. Well, yeah, Russia melted down Chernobyl. They also screwed up Mavec. So, yeah, we can trust Russia. Iran accused foreign forces of carrying out the act of sabotage, but did not immediately name any one nation it believes to be responsible for tampering in Iraq. And again, America shouldn't own these damn things either. The Iraq nuclear reactor has emerged as a sticking point in negotiations between Tehran and the West due to its ability to provide Iran with a second plutonium-based path to nuclear weapons. That's all we need. The reported acts of sabotage were spotted during inspections of the facility by Iranian intelligence forces and later reported by the country's atomic energy organization, according to FAR as a news agency. Quote, intelligence inspections at the nuclear facilities indicated that some pumps of the second circuitry of Iraq's IR-40 project had undergone mechanical operations in a bid to disrupt the routine work at the plant. In other words, they were too stupid to catch it before they installed it. Let's give them a nuclear power plant in an earthquake zone. No wonder people hate you, Putin, you freaking moron. These instances of sabotage have been discovered in just the past several months, according to Zeran. Some acts of sabotage in the industrial sector have been identified and foiled in the last few months, though cooperation between the intelligence ministry and other security bodies. You morons are going to melt this down because you shouldn't build it. That is the correct view. There ain't no arguing it. It frustrates the hell out of me. So what should America do? America should start drilling and stop buying. By that I mean anything out of Iran. Uh, planet in, Planet.infowars.com 14 year old boy just wrote an outstanding poem. I'm going to read the poem forward and I'm going to let you read it backwards. Our generation will be known for nothing. Never will anybody say we were the peak of mankind. What is wrong? The truth is our generation was a failure. Thinking that we actually succeeded it is a waste. Oh, my screen's going out. And we know living only for money and power is the way to go. Being loving, respectful, and kind is the dumb thing to do. Forgetting about that time will be easy, but we will try. Changing our world for the better is something that we never did. Giving up was how we handled our problems. Working hard was a joke. We knew that people thought we couldn't come back. That might be true unless we turned things around. Now, when you read it the other way around, from the bottom to the top, unless we turned things around, that might be true. People thought we couldn't come back. We knew that was a joke. Working hard was how we handled our problems. Giving up is something we never did. Changing our world for the better will not be easy, but we will try. Forgetting about that time is a dumb thing to do. Being loving, respectful, and kind is the way to go. Living only for money and power is a waste, and we know we actually succeeded. Thinking that our generation was a failure, that is wrong. The truth is, we were the peak of mankind. Never will anybody say that our generation will be known for nothing. That is a truly brilliant poem written by a 14-year-old. Absolute brilliance. It's nice to know that art, is, art isn't dead, even though that readership is. Friends at WashingtonPost.com, the dumdy of the day! The Golden Dumdy, as it were. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I do the dunce cap of the month at the end of every, at the beginning of every month. We mail a dunce cap to somebody, and we end up with so many stories that we can't even get to them all. But we cover them once a day at the end of the show as the Dumdy of the day, and this is one of them. Why are they getting a Dumdy? Because nuclear power plants run XP. We already know what a meltdown will do there. Lots of people in government are running XP. Here's what you do. One of two things. 
You give Microsoft a few million dollars to keep updating XP. And that secures the workforce of the people that need to do that for the foreseeable future. Or you hire a handful of those people to continue updating XP for you. We have the technological know-how to do this. Now, if we don't, how stupid can you be? I mean, really, how stupid can you be? You can't shut the operations down because a lot of times to shut them down and put a new operating system on means to shut off the radar on a nuclear sub, for instance. You don't want to do that. They need to keep running what they've already begun. Uh, my brother argues they should have ran Linux. Well, maybe, but they haven't. Uh, and he's right on that. But the trouble is, now that we have XP, it's not that hard to hire the people that can keep it secure. And if you think it is hard, then you're one of the reasons it's got the dumdy of the day. The deadline for installing security.